Spread it so you can sit here and uh, you can, um, or, or do you want to step there? Yeah, please, 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 go ahead. Oh, yours? Okay. All right, okay, okay. So we, we start with uh, the Tribal Museum in Bhopal. Museums across Bhopal. <laughs> Madhya Pradesh. Good evening, friends. From the green and clean heart of incredible India. Jitni seatse hain, bhari nahi hain, se yada khali hain. Dekhte dil bada bad raha hai. At this fag end of the day, when everyone is exhausted, it's a difficult task for me to present before you the kind of diversity of museums which we have in Madhya Pradesh. Madhya Pradesh is a very, very interesting place and in fact it's a kaleidoscope of natural history, archaeological wonders and also very, very immersive living heritage practices. Madhya Pradesh is very interesting in one sense because and it's also a paradise for history lovers because the history itself they start from prehistoric days. As you know that world famous rock shelter and cave art, which is there in Bhim Padika, which is also a UNESCO World Heritage Site. A World Heritage Site is there in Madhya Pradesh. And this is the place which actually exhibits the first signs of human life on this planet. Then from there on, from Paleolithic to Mesolithic, down to Chagolithic, and then Iron Age, everything, all the evidence of and the exhibits of all those ages are there in Madhya Pradesh. And when it comes to kingdoms, we have been ruled by great kingdoms, kingdoms of Mauryas getting back to third, third century. BC to Guptas, which was there in 4th and 5th century AD, to Kachuris, to Parmars, to Chandelas, to Gonds, to Mughals, to Marathas, and to British. And all the great kingdoms, they left their indelible mark on the history of Madhya Pradesh by way of having these am amusing monuments, forts, palaces temples, mosques, which are, you know, state. And that makes the job of Madhya Pradesh government more honorable to not only conserve this history for authority, but also to showcase it to the present generation in the most interesting manner. And the state government has been doing its job very sincerely for many years, and we have got 35 museums out of that a couple of them are state level museums. MP being a huge state, these state museums are in all the corners, north, south, east and west of Madhya Pradesh and down to the district level museums and also a couple of uh, thematic museums uh, in various places. As we understand, museums are like to peep into the past. And these are kind of reverse time machines. And definitely, it's a very, very challenging task to not only maintain the museums, but also to put them up in a very interesting manner. So I'll just run through a couple of important museums of Madhya Pradesh to just give you a sense of what kind of archaeological wealth we have in the state. So, before you can see, this is the State Museum of uh, Bhopal, which was set up way back 
1909, and it has got an array of archaeological wealth, prehistoric excavation materials with stone sculptures, metal images, uh, inscriptions, miniature paintings, wall paintings of bark cave, world famous bark cave, weapons, and many, many thematic galleries, etc. Uh, in another part of Madhya Pradesh, we have a state museum called Gujri Mahal Museum, uh, which, is, which was set up in 1922, and which has got a world famous uh, iconic sculpture of Shal Bhanjika, and also Udaipur Prashasti, and other things, which are very, very interesting to see. Uh, in the central part of Madhya Pradesh, in Indore, we have a central museum, which was established way back in 1923, and also houses a number of very valuable uh, and rare uh, artifacts. Then we have in Jabalpur, uh, Rani Durgavati Museum, which was established in 1964. And we have exhibits related to Shaiva, Shakta, Vaishnava, Jain, and other kinds of inscriptions. And also, we have famous Chautat Yogini Temple and the uh, artifacts related to that. We have Uma Maheshwar sculpture playing Chautar, Gaurasan Lakshmi, and many, many more important sculptures which are, you know, very much appreciated by the history lovers. Then we have in Chhatarpur a place called Bhubela, which is just an art drive from Khajraho, Khajraho being world famous UNESCO World Heritage Site. And this Bhubela was the power, seat of power of Chhatrasal, Maharaja Chhatrasal and his kingdom. And this museum is dedicated after his name, it was established in 1965, and it exhibits many uh, specific uh, sculptures related to Bakhelkan and Bundelkan region. Let me tell you, Madhya Pradesh being a very huge state, and it is divided into different regions. There are around eight regions, Malwa, Nimar, Bakhelkan, Bundelkan, Rivanchal, all those kind of regions. And every region has its own linguistic capabilities, its own art, culture, cuisine, everything changes every 100, meter, 100 kilometers you traverse throughout the state. So it, goes a, it has got a great diversity throughout the state. So this museum showcases Bagelkhand and Bundelkhand prominently and some of the major other exhibits. Then we have uh, a latest addition in Ujjain called Triveni Museum, uh, which was established during the Singhas of in 2016. And it has got both the wings, one related to art and culture and one related to archaeology. And as it, it has been made in a very uh, interesting manner. Another museum, state level museum in Satna called Sulti Museum. And it was established in 1978. And it is known for having remains of Barhat Stupa of Shunga period. And also many important antiquities of Gupta period. Then coming to museums of art and living heritage practices. This is one area where Madhya Pradesh has really done a very, very credible job. And we have really, we have very creatively showcased our intangible heritage by way of these museums. One of the most important museums can see is Indira Gandhi Rasri Manav Sangrale, which is uh, done by Ministry of Culture in Bhopal. And uh, it's a huge open air museum sprawling in an area of more than 200 acres and which showcases the anthropological importance of different geographical locations of the country and also uh, various uh, traditional habitats of different tribal communities of the whole nation. It's a treat to your eyes once you go to Bhopal, you must, must see this Indira Gandhi Rastri Mango Sangrale, which is one of its kind in the country. Then we have very famous Bharat Bhavan, which is not only a museum but also hotbed of activities and we have here modern art galleries, auditoriums, sorry, the screen here, I can't see. Uh, another museum which has come up just in 2013 is Tribal Museum of Bhopal. Uh, Mini was just mentioning about this Tribal Museum and yeah, now I can see. So uh, in the Tribal Museum, uh, the artists of Madhya Pradesh, especially the travel artists, they have been involved to create and curate this museum themselves. 
and you can see the entire array of art, culture, music, dance, everything related to major seven or eight uh, tribal communities which are uh, there in Madhya Pradesh. All, uh, all, all their art and culture are displayed in this museum. I will show you by way of a very small film at the end of the presentation what are the things which are showcased in tribal museum. And it's also a very active uh, live center of showcasing different kind of live, live art forms. You can see there almost on daily basis tribal artists doing paintings over there, bheel paintings, gone paintings. And that's, that has also become a center for linking their art and culture to the marketplace. We also have very good souvenir shops and also online market systems uh, where they can sell their artifacts uh, on the e-commerce platforms. Uh, this Adivarts Museum in Khajraho was established just recently, 2022, when the whole world was shut down during COVID, we were working. And we created an uh, art village in Khajraho itself, and which showcases all the living habitats and the practices of the tribal communities of Madhya Pradesh. This is also something worth seeing whenever you are in Khajraho. Please do take out time and visit uh, Adivarts Museum in Khajraho. Then we have historic house museums. Some of these places, which are historical palaces or forts or monuments, have been converted to museums. And some of them also have been put to adaptive reuse. For example, this Lal Bagh Palace in Indore and also Rajwada in Indore. These, these are the palaces and the places where Holkers uh, they used to live. And these have been converted into very good museums. Lal Bagh Palace is being restored to its old glory. In Maheshwar, we have Devi Ahilya Museum dedicated to the life and contribution of uh, Devi Ahilya Bai. And in uh, Gwalior, we have Maharaj Vada. This is again uh, 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 an old um, uh, historical building which has been put to adaptive reuse and we have put state-of-the-art digital museums especially related to music in this particular place which is in the heart of the town. Now we also have a number of natural history museums. One museum of natural history is in Bhopal, Geoscience Museum in Gwalior, Geological Museum in Balaghat, one fossil museum in Mandu, one fossil museum is in Delori. Not related to me, I don't think. Okay. So, uh, Madhya Pradesh is also very important when it, when it comes to the geological wealth and we have tried to showcase some of these in these museums. Then we are, we are also having a number of good and very uh, nicely uh, curated private museums in Madhya Pradesh. One of them is in Gwalior, Ivaji Rao Sindhya Museum, and which has got certain iconic artifacts shown, shown over there. We have got a museum related to Sarod, Gwalior being a very famous place for music, especially Gwalior Gharana and Rupat. And some of these things have been showcased in a private museum called Sarod there. Now, apart from these museums, we also have a number of projects lined up which are upcoming and we are constantly reinventing ourselves, repositioning ourselves how to really take out the history of Madhya Pradesh to the, uh, to the whole citizenry and especially related to youth, how to connect them with the museum. So, uh, one museum is coming up in Bhopal called Raja Bhoj Museum or City Museum which will showcase the history of Bhopal and Madhya Pradesh and also the life and contributions of Raja Bhoj. And this is going to be done with the help of Ministry of Culture. Then we have one museum which is coming up in Gwalior in Moti Mahal. Moti Mahal is again a old palace of India which has been put to now adaptive reuse. We are going to have a heritage hotel over there and one part of it will be converted into museum of music dedicated to Gwalior Kharana. Then we are also creating certain museums which are going to be dedicated to freedom fighters uh, to commemorate their contributions to the freedom struggle of India. One of them is going to be in Shivpuri, devoted to Satya Tope. And uh, one museum we are coming out in Bhimpetka, showcasing the historic rock art and also making it a 
a very interactive, interactive kind of place, especially for the youngsters. In Morena, we are coming up with Ram Prasad Bismil uh, Sangrale, that too, with the help of the Minister of Culture. And one museum we are coming out with is Geological Park at Bhira Ghat, uh, Jabalpur, uh, which is known for marble rocks, which, which is also a very unique site. And also other geological forms of Madhya Pradesh will be showcased here. This museum we are doing with the help of Ministry of Mines. So some of these museums uh, have really been very, very helpful in uh, telling the stories of uh, specifically related uh, unique aspects of Madhya Pradesh to the next generation. But of course, uh, I do agree that it is very, uh, we could really do a great job in putting up the museums of intangible heritage in a proper manner, but showcasing the tangible heritage uh, in a proper manner to the uh, next generation and keeping them engaged in the museum is a huge challenge. And especially this is a challenge really to how to, how to take museums from, you know, being very mundane to sort of surreal, from uh, inert to interactive, from passive to immersive and experiential. That's a huge challenge and everyone who is here, all the technology providers, all the curators, we are open for suggestions, open for taking help from them. But whatever project we are going to come up with in Madhya Pradesh, we would like to take them up in the right earnest and make them very, very experiential and activity-oriented kind of museum. And also, we have taken up a policy to upgrade our existing museum and taking them to the next level. I will end my presentation by showing you a couple of uh, two minutes of uh, Gopal Tribal Museum and Adivarth Museum. Can you please play the movie? Cultural Village Adi Word, Madhya Pradesh State Museum of Tribal and Folk Arts, Hajuraho, Madhya Pradesh. Adi Word Adhud Banai, Madhya Pradesh ke Janjati, Samdai ki Kala, Sanskriti, Khan, Pan, Rahen, Tain, Bez, Usha, Tain, Tiohar, Devi, Devta, Sudha, Paramparai, Bhasa, Bolya, Andrit, Sangeet. Is Kala ko hume puri dunia ko dikhana hai. lives of tribes from close quarters. It is ornamented with the colors of primal life. 
folk traditions and aesthetics. Welcome to Madhya Pradesh Tribal Museum, Bhopal. Hope you like the virtual tour. I invite one and everyone here for a real tour of Madhya Pradesh and relish the cultural and tourism uh, assets of Madhya Pradesh. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Mr. Shukla, for that wonderful presentation. You need a lifetime to actually discover every part of Madhya Pradesh. It's really a state blessed with a lot of history. And I must tell you, I was there in January and I went and visited the Lal Bagh Palace. And what uh, you must uh, know about the Lal Bagh Palace is that it is also a copy of the Palace of Versailles in France. It's the most amazing jewel right at the center of Indore. Well, uh, moving from Madhya Pradesh, we uh, head to the northeast, to Shillong and a wonderful uh, museum that is being developed over there for indigenous people and the communities. And Frederick is going to take us through that. Frederick. A very good afternoon to all of you. At the very outset, I must thank the Ministry of Culture and especially the Joint Secretary, Ms. Mukda Sinha, for having uh, uh, you know, curated this entire uh, an expo and uh, bringing all the cultural stakeholders under one roof. And my presentation this evening will be especially on this museum that brings the entire indigenous culture of the Northeast under one roof, the Don Bosco Center for uh, Indigenous Cultures. So this is a shot of the Don Bosco uh, Center for, uh, for the Indigenous Cultures and I'll just take you uh, on a journey through this museum. Uh, it is the most prominent museum, uh, not only in Meghalaya, but in the Northeast, on indigenous cultures. And it gives you a, you know, a glimpse in, into the enchanting Northeast. And uh, it is regarded as one of the finest museums on the promotion of indigenous and tribal cultures of the Northeastern states. And uh, it has uh, contributed to uh, playing a role in also, uh, you know, I'm contributing to various studies on uh, not only anthropological, but ethnographic, as well as uh, sociological studies on the indigenous communities. And uh, the aim is, of course, to preserve the cultural heritage of the indigenous tribes of the Northeast. As you know, most of the tribal cultures uh, believe more in the oral culture. So it's important that we preserve the, uh, not only the intangible, but also the tangible of uh, the Northeastern uh, culture as well. So uh, the aim, of course, is to preserve and to collect documents, cultural artifacts of the indigenous tribal population. It's, on a, it's built on a seven-story structure. And this resonates with the uh, cultural link that we have uh, of the indigenous community of the Khasis, which believe that nine families are uh, in the heavenly abode, and the seven families, the seven huts, or the Hinyo trip, as they call them, are uh, you know, in the earthly domain below. So it has seven stories, so this museum resonates uh, this, uh, this cultural ethos. And also it showcases the state's rich cultural heritage, not only the state, but also the seven states of the Northeast. Uh, the DBIC is considered to be a treasure trove uh, of information and offers uh, a glimpse into the, uh, like, you know, into the tribal languages as well, because uh, it also envisages to be a premier academic institution whose larger purpose is anchored in the outreach of promoting public dialogue and also becoming a contributor towards overcoming the forces of discord. Uh, we know that uh, Northeast is a region of immense complexity, various tribes, about 239 communities all over, so it attempts to be a bridge and uh, attempts to contribute towards understanding each other's communities and each other's practices and also is a window to the outside world. As the byline goes, that uh, it is uh, a call, I mean, it is a space where you, you can experience Northeast under one roof, which is blessed by, by diversity, but driven by the same values. Uh, as uh, one of the uh, major objectives, as I just mentioned, is to be a bridge, and also to uh, ensure that uh, when you visit this particular museum, it uh, is an immersive, as well as an engaging uh, kind of an experience. They have various multimedia displays, which I shall uh, be sharing in the subsequent slides. Uh, they have the beating of the log drum. As soon as you enter this museum, 
the guys will uh, make you uh, beat the log drum and beat various musical instruments so that you get a sense of the music and the rhythms of this region. Um, it has uh, various distinct operational areas. The aim is to contribute, of course, to the cultural intelligence and also to endeavor for cultural transformation. And uh, various artifacts have been arranged thematically floor to floor. And uh, there, are various paint there are various galleries with excellent paintings. And it also uh, acts as a center for research uh, because uh, this particular museum also uh, uh, organizes studies and research on indigenous culture. And it houses the NERA, which is the Northeast uh, Institute for Research and Anthropology. And uh, they are active in also uh, publications uh, of various cultural related and anthropological uh, publications. And they've organized many workshops and seminars. There is a lot of focus on knowledge sharing, uh, especially on the indigenous culture. And uh, they have attempted to also introduce technology through touch screens, plasma panels, and computer presentations, as well as documentation. And uh, the museum as a whole, its holistic aim is to develop a museum concept in education through its museum tours. They organize a number of music tours for children, not only of Meghalaya, but also of the neighboring northeastern states. They have research and publications. So they, they believe and they're driven by a museum concept in education. Uh, even architecturally, it's quite interesting because uh, it has a distinctive architecture. Uh, it tries to adopt the local architecture of the surrounding, uh, you know, tribal uh, hamlets, and it prominently adores the Shillong skyline. You get a, there's a skywalk right on top of the museum where you get a 360-degree view of Shillong. And architecturally, they've also used a honeycomb, uh, you know, hex, uh, it's a hexagonal pattern, and uh, it, it gives uh, a very unique perspective of the Northeast, and it is one of the uh, must-visit when you come to Shillong. There's a image of some school students, a night view as well as a day view of the skywalk right on top of this uh, museum. Uh, I'll just briefly go through the various sections of the museum. That's the entrance. Uh, it's uh, you know, distinctly tribal in its architecture. They have an alcove gallery, 22 colorfully dressed hosts, dressed in the uh, costumes of the various tribes of the Northeast, uh, which greet you as soon as you enter into the museum. They have a souvenir counters where uh, you, you get uh, to buy the products of uh, and also the handicrafts and handrooms of the entire Northeast, various handmade, homegrown, handpicked products. Uh, you have uh, a, uh, you know, a missions and a cultures gallery, which underlines uh, the many interventions that are being made in the field of culture by various organizations. You have uh, a prehistory gallery and introductory gallery, which gives you uh, a clear picture of the tribal world uh, in this distant corner of India, and uh, also prehistory gallery, which also depicts the biocultural evolution of man through various images. Uh, we have a, uh, in the first basement, we have a land and people's gallery introducing the visitor to the immense anthropological and topographic, uh, topographical richness of the, of the region. Then you have a tribal artifact donated by various prominent families uh, in, uh, in Meghalaya and the rest uh, of, this, uh, you know, of the region. There's a log drum, the beautiful log drum, which, uh, which you can get to see right at the entrance of the museum. And uh, being conscious of the fact that we are surrounded by uh, international, uh, you know, borders, and we have, we are in the midst of these uh, South Asian countries. They also have uh, a neighbors gallery, which showcases the neighboring countries of the Northeast: Nepal, Bhutan, China, Myanmar, Bangladesh. And uh, it is considered to be a small yet beautiful jewel uh, in this uh, treasure tr uh, trove that's called the BCIC. And we have a photo gallery in a space corner as well. Uh, this. Photo gallery, uh, share, uh, I have, uh, have a number of rare photographs dating right from the time of Varier Elwin, who was uh, known to be a leading uh, British anthropologist who had captured many uh, rare pictures of the Northeast. Uh, they have monochrome and black and white dating back to 50, 60 years ago, capturing village life in the Northeast. A space corner is there because um, uh, I mean, Shillong also um, is, uh, is the regional headquarters of the Northeast Space Application Center. And uh, in fact, recently we had the G20 uh, space meet, which was held in Shillong. So it captures a bit of the uh, uh, space story in, in this section. And the ground floor, of course, uh, the, all the livelihoods that the Northeast communities have been linked to, fishing, hunting, gathering, gallery. And the number of sustenance level uh, occupations of this region, the, the various kinds of fishing nets, the various kinds of hunting tools, 
it captures an essence of this on the ground floor, the various architectures, the types of cultivation undertaken by the tribes, practiced since time immemorial. It gives you a glimpse into the past. And the first floor, of course, is the traditional technology gallery, providing a glimpse of the, of the economic life of the vast majority of the people of the region since time immemorial and right to the present day. Then basketry, we all know that Northeast is famous for its uh, basket skills, its uh, you know, bamboo skills. So basketry, uh, which is a vital skill for the Northeast and each tribe engages in it, and what kind of baskets are produced, in what shapes and uh, forms and sizes and purposes, that is uh, given, uh, you know, I mean, you, you get a glimpse of it in this particular section. Then you have a musical instruments gallery. We know that music is an integral part of the tribal communities, various tribal instruments, <coughs> some of which we've seen here uh, in, the, you know, in the exhibits here as well. And this showcases a rich collection of musical instruments uh, throughout the Northeast of various tribes, wind uh, instruments, uh, flutes, drums, percussion, all sorts of instruments. You get a, uh, you know, a flavor of the musical rhythm and the melodies of this region. And on the second floor, of course, we have various cultural artifacts depicting the interconnecting thread between the indigenous faith, uh, the indigenous cultures, and the bonds between the faith and the culture, and uh, various uh, uh, exhibits as well as uh, stories are also depicted uh, visually uh, in this section. Uh, we have a weapons gallery. We know that uh, uh, weapons play a big part in the uh, life and in the uh, you know, uh, in the pattern of life of the Northeast, so it's a reminder of how people struggle for survival, uh, what tools I and mean, what weapons they use. And the second floor, of course, is the vibrant costumes gallery, the costumes and the ornaments gallery, the colorful textiles, the ornaments, uh, which is the pride of every tribe, still worn very, uh, uh, with, with a lot of pride even to this day, and is a steadfast symbol of community identity. So this is showcased uh, on the second gallery, and then on the third, the, and the natural resources and the housing pattern gallery, which exhibits the rich resources <coughs> of this region. Then we have a tribal art gallery. Uh, it's an emerging, uh, uh, you know, area uh, in the northeast. It's, it was more well known for its costumes, but now art is also uh, coming to the spotlight. So the rich collection of tribal art and, and artifacts collected from all the northeastern states, depicting various uh, aspects of tribal life, tourism, culture, that is there. And then we have a gastronomic uh, exposure to the uh, cuisine of the Northeast. Today in the lunch, we had a Ayurveda gastronomic experience. So when you come to the museum, you also get a taste of the flavor and the, and the you know, uh, of the various uh, cuisines uh, of the Northeast. So you, you get a, you know, a flavor of that. Uh, the fourth floor, of course, uh, I remember in the morning when uh, the Minister of State, uh, Madam uh, Minakshi Lekhi, had mentioned in opening remarks that a museum should not be a warehouse, but it should be a place which engages, which triggers the involvement, and which also uh, you know, connects with people. So that's why there is a media hall, and also keeping in, in mind the objective of this museum, which is Museum for Education, where it tries to advocate uh, the you know, interconnectedness between community and uh, th that, you know, our that our, that our art and craft and our heritage is a living part of our community. So that's why there's this uh, audio-visual display, there's a space for performances and seminars. And uh, there's also a mini museum for the children and the students to trigger their curiosity and, and, and learning through e-games, through quizzes, through experiential learning for the younger generation. So this is a, a very popular corner, especially for school children. And uh, fifth row, of course, is the administrative room. So some of the cultural performances that are witnessed in this uh, particular space and also uh, uh, talks and symposiums from time to time. Uh, I would also like to, uh, so that, uh, that draws the curtain on the first part on the Don Bosco Indigenous Museum. Uh, we know that we're in the midst of the Azadi Ki Amrit Mahotsav. So last year, the last two years rather, we had launched a museum on wheels. And this museum on wheels basically is a customized mobile museum. Uh, and also it, it was an initiative to celebrate uh, India at 75 and Meghalaya at 50 because even our state Meghalaya touched 50 years, I mean celebrated its golden jubilee last year. So it tries to capture um, the ethos of India at 75 as well as um, Meghalaya at 50. So we had this museum and wheels. Uh, there's a tweet by the Honorable Minister 
uh, uh, I mean by the Union Minister of uh, Arts and Culture and uh, Tourism, Sri Reddy ji, when uh, this was launched last year. So uh, these are some images of uh, school students coming into the Museum of Wheels and arousing interest among uh, students and general public. And this is a short video. It's, uh, it's a humble project, but it did manage to go from district capital to district capital, uh, arousing interest on, um, you know, on fighters from the north as well as the national leaders. So this is a small little video presentation. aim was to celebrate the safe path, uh, connecting the future to the past and triggering interest uh, in a generation that perhaps uh, may be losing its mooring with the, uh, with the past. So uh, it also celebrates the safe architects, how Meghalaya was formed. Uh, so this is a brief video clip of that. Thank you for this, uh, Patrick. Uh, this is a wonderful uh, introduction to uh, uh, the, the museum and, of course, uh, the fact that what we yeah. need for museums is a people's museum. Which, people's uh, museum, which, yeah. Uh, I'm afraid we're running out of time. Yeah, so I'll just go yeah. uh, quickly. These are some pop-up museums which we do when, uh, when visiting dignitaries come. When the, uh, when the Union Home Minister had come, Sri Amit Shah Ji, we did some pop-up museums uh, in Cherapunji because we don't have a museum there, but we do these pop-up museums uh, uh, for, uh, for visiting dignitaries. And uh, uh, I'd just like to touch briefly on the living community museums. We've identified six across the uh, We have a woodcraft village, we have a, a black clay a pottery village, we have an arts district, we have four villages, and uh, so this is just a brief, uh, you know, picture. I'll, so this is Amin Nagare. I'll just quickly go through it. It's a, uh, it's a woodcraft village. Uh, I'm not going to. Uh, I'll just. This is a black uh, clay village. I mean, black uh, pottery clay village, which we've identified. I'm not going to go through the full presentation, but just give you a flavour quickly. And this is the art district uh, in West Khasi Hills, which uh, has a lot of sculpture and. So th these are living, I mean, living museums. So this is Pahambir, which is rich in folklore and ribhoi. And uh, the last two, one, this is a board of folklore, and the last one is the uh, Sangwang district, which is famous for cane and weaving, especially among women. Uh, and we are coming to the last one, this is Wakan village, which is a music village. And here also they, uh, you know, it's a, it's a community, you know, heritage village. These are living villages. So I'm not going to uh, touch on this because I think I'm running out of time. Thank you very much. Sorry about that, Frederick. This is a wonderful presentation and, uh, you know, it does uh, encourage people to go to Shillong and Meghalaya to actually witness some of this. Uh, let me invite uh, Mr. Anjali Kumar Singh, Sinha, who doesn't need any introduction, actually, because under him... Uh, the Bihar Museum has become the epicenter, I think, of, 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 uh, of activity and what a museum should be. So he's really uh, inspirational in the way he has kind of led that museum. And every time I go to the Bihar Museum, I just come away uh, by what he has been able to achieve there with his team. Greetings from Bihar Museum. Uh, I will show a small film eight minute film and I have very few things to uh, present before you. Uh, Bihar Museum is primarily a history museum but we also have galleries of contemporary art, Bihar diaspora, our folk tradition. Even we have a restaurant which specializes in Bihari cuisine. So basically we are trying to tell the story of Bihar. We have a very rich heritage and culture. And once Patliputra, when Patliputra was capital of India, that time India was bigger than what it is today. We had all Guptas, Mauryas, huge heritage. So that has to be told to the people of people of India and to the world. So with that concept, this Bihar Museum came in Patna. Uh, today, Museums are not collections. 
now museums are places of activity they have to become art and culture center if they have to survive earlier people used to call it jadu ghar people used to come school children will come they will see the statues and sculptures some paintings go back but now they want to be engaged so museum has to keep on creating activities which engages the community for children especially because india and bihar has a very young population so our children section is huge and here we are there is nothing like don't touch in my museum it is please touch please explore please feel please and the uh, artifacts are done in such uh, material that they are able to stand whatever children want to do because i want my people my to be and enjoy the museum another role that is very important is museum can remain people will not go only you have to use the music drama poetry film you have to keep on doing activities then only people will keep coming to the museum otherwise people will come see once or twice that end engagement with museum but i here i will talk about a few problems that most of the museums may be facing at least i am facing one is to engage the audience what is happening we did a survey and we found that 60% of time suppose somebody is spending 1 hour so out of that 60 minutes 40 minutes he is he is either taking he or she is either taking photographs or selfies he is not reading what is written there he is not spending time with that artifact so this is a huge question to us so now we are trying to address this question how we engage our visitors that to that is one second many governments have made very nice buildings with beautiful museums but running a museum and maintaining a museum is very difficult task and especially you know somehow neither in central government nor in state government art and culture will never get a very high priority you will keep on getting 0.5% of the budget or 1% of the budget so how you are going to run your museum we have something like 30 35 museums running them and getting budget for them is a big big challenge and the third thing that has come that is the technology so what is happening i have seen many places now now this whole thing has become so technology driven you are not knowing the cost of maintaining it suppose you have in your museum 200 projections or interactive things so maintaining those things are very very difficult so with all these you know when we are discussing all this in 2021 we started a concept of museum binale so let us create a platform where museums can meet they can bring their history their uniqueness their collection we will share that and all museum professionals with their ideas exchange the ideas how they have solved their problem how we can you know work together there are so many more than 1000 museums in india but we have never come on a platform so with that concept we started a museum binale in 2021 because that was a pandemic year so it was more virtual this year is the second edition 2023 we are doing second edition of museum binale bihar museum binale and lot many museums indian as well as foreign museums are participating that will be inaugurated on 7th august 2023 and we invite all of you to come you know it will go for four months so there is sufficient time inauguration is on 7 and we are also doing g20 art exhibition together we art where our g20 20 members and nine guest countries will participate we are getting one artist from each country 29 country 28 country and one artwork and we have selected 20 indian senior artists so there will be a very nice huge exhibition you are welcome for that exhibition also i'll not take more of your time i'll show the small film which will give you the glimpse of the art museum thank you for listening
This is the Yakshi of Gitaganj. The Yakshi has many names. Shal Banjika, Vrishjika, Surasundari. It's a long list. India's illustrious past tells us that these beautiful women are symbols of fertility and heralders of fulfillment, fecundity and abundance. This home is also a magical world in which one can see the distinguished past of Bihar through the contemporary window of a continuously developing state. We tend to forget where we come from. The museum has been set up to remind us and everyone else of the constantly kindling flame of our heritage. A visit to the Bihar Museum is a holistic experience in which one can see and enjoy works of art, learn about them, eat, play and meditate. It has been designed like a university campus where the galleries are interconnected and spread outwards. Today, Bihar's capital Patna defines a new relationship between the triple streams of progress, science and art as it links up with the ultramodern world of the future while aspiring to forge a creative link with Patniputra's prosperous past. The capital of the great Mauryan emperors, Patliputra, modern-day Patna, was not only identified with military might, but also as a center of prosperity cultural refinement and education. The identity of the new Patna of today is Samrat Ashok International Convention Center, the house of knowledge standing grandly on the shores of the Ganga. The Sabhita Dwa, or the gate of civilization of Kyan Bhavan, shows us new paths for the future, at the same time opening the doors to our prosperous past. It is said that an artist himself recreates his predecessors. He opens closed doors, illuminating them with a new light, while lending a contemporary identity to old windows and doors already open. Possibly the largest museum in India in terms of its scale, the Bihar Museum is a symbol of this new identity. Its doors open for the public on the 2nd of October 2017. In 2011, Maki and Associates of Tokyo, along with Opolis Architects of Mumbai, were announced winners of an international competition to design the Bihar Museum. Many art experts call the Didar Ganj Yakshi the Mona Lisa of India. But this Yakshi wants to continue to remain the symbol of Bihar's distinguished past. It's a kind of symbol that wants to link us with digital dreams of the future and its immense possibilities, while at the same time linking the great past with the dreams and realities of the common man. The Bihar Museum is a museum of international standards. It aims to showcase the rich heritage of Bihar in its correct perspective while incorporating the concept of new museology with its motto, 
Museum of Community. The overall architecture of the museum is a living example of art where, as you look into the open passages, you reflect on great art experiences as evident in its various galleries. The History Gallery, the Contemporary Art Gallery, the Regional Gallery, along with Bihar's Diaspora Gallery. The Bihari diaspora is important since Biharis have made places like Mauritius, Fiji and Suriname their home and yet their deep links with their roots remain significant. Subodh Gupta, one of the most eminent and internationally established names in the world of contemporary Indian art, not only belongs to Bihar, but has also been a student of the Patna Arts College. His installation, titled Yantra, in the prestigious Buddha Anga, created with steel utensils put up in the museum's courtyard, symbolizes forward-looking art of Bihar. <laughs> Distinguished art enthusiasts and laypersons like to visit the Bihar Museum time and again. The children's gallery and discovery room is the very heart of the Bihar Museum. This is a wonderland for children and directs them towards constructive, knowledge-driven activities, arousing intellectual curiosity to mold them into well-rounded citizens. Indeed, in this state-of-the-art museum, children feel relaxed at home and have an abundance of new discoveries to make. And finally, do not forget to savor Bihari cuisine. The branding of Bihari cuisine is equally important for the museum and the eating area is artistically designed. A single visit is not sufficient to search, learn, and come alive. With each visit, you gain a new insight. There is no discrimination here. The potter, the king, the saint, Buddha, Mahavir, Chanakya, Aryabhata, Shesha Suri and Ashok the Great all stand under one roof. Patna's new Sabdhita Dwar reminds one of Ashok's saying, when you respect another religion, you only add to the prestige of your own. This gateway to the museum silently tells us that if you respect the arts of the world, then the way you look at and appreciate your own art also changes. The fulfillment famous last words out there that when you respect 
others, you respect yourself and you actually add to your own uh, repository. So the Bihar Museum is really India's world-class museum. It's a gold standard for me at least and a lot of museums should aspire to that. The last speaker today is Pankaj Sharma. He represents a very interesting uh, experiment and ex interesting endeavor, which is to create a museum at Vadnagar, which is among archaeologists quite an important site because it is an ancient city which is still intact. And uh, that's what archaeologists are doing. They're digging up layers of Vadnagar, and a new museum out there is reflecting the story of that region. Good afternoon, everybody. Uh, first, I would like to thank you, Ministry of Culture, and especially uh, Mrs. Mukta Sinnaji, Joint Secretary, Ministry of Culture, for organizing such an event. Uh, earlier also, we were discussing about, like, we should have a platform where each and every museum professional, they can come together, they can discuss, they can have a, an idea, because what is happening, museum, like the person who are working in the museum, they do not have much knowledge about the agencies or architects who are working in the field. So this is really good platform to like to interact with the, each other like architects or designers or uh, museum professionals. They are able to know, they can contact each other and they are able to know each other through this platform. So here I am going to just uh, show you the two museums of Vadnagar. First of all, like Vadnagar, this is a, we should say this is an ancient town where we are finding the uh, uninterrupted 2500 years old civilization over there. Uh, so, uh, actually, first excavation was started there in 1953. Uh, where few objects were found during the excavation and later on uh, uh, from 2003 to 2012 the state archaeology department they started excavation there in the Vadnagar. There we have found almost 22,000 objects over there and uh, in 2006 a big Buddhist monastery found or uh, in the Vadnagar. We have found few sculptures also there uh, in the Vadnagar. So, one of the very important sculptures that was from the Mathura. And on that sculpture it is written there like that particular Buddhist mat that belongs to the Bhikshuni. It is a mat which belongs to the like Nandri, it was the Nandri. So, it is a very important uh, findings during the 2012 and 13. Then later on, from 2014 and 2015, the ASI department, they, do, they took over further the excavation. And uh, excavation is going on there. So we have found seven cultural period in Vardnagar. From 2nd century BC to the, like we can say, continue traditions we are finding over there. The cultural period we have found over there. So in the seven cultural period, Uh, uh, in the seven cultural period, we have found there like uh, Rampart, post Rampart, Chhatrapa period, post Chhatrapa Metraka period is there, then Solanki period is there, uh, after Solanki Sultanate period is there, and uh, finally the Gaikwad period is there. But we are finding reference of uh, Vadnagara and Purana also. If I talk about the uh, ancient town uh, Vadnagar, so Iskan Puran also mentioned about the Vadnagar and so many other Puranas also mentioned, the, uh, mentioned about the Vadnagar. So Anarthpur, Anand Pradesh, Chamatkarpur, so different names are there we are finding in, the, in Mahabharata, in Puranas about the Vadnagar. So that is why we are thinking like this is the very old town and uh, one of the ancient town is there. And we are also finding like uh, Kalpa Sutra, it was recited over there during the 5th century. So in a, uh, like uh, Jain, uh, uh, this is a Jain tradition, they are saying like 
first Kalp Sutra was recited in the uh, Vardhnaga during the uh, fifth century. So this is a uh, like uh, uh, when Henshwang he visited the Vardhnaga during the sixth century. So he also mentioned in his travel log about the Vardhnaga, like it was the 2000 Li area was there where we are founding like uh, so many Buddhists were there. So when Buddhist was declining in all over India, so at the northern uh, part, it was like developing and so many like uh, Buddhist monks, they were going to Vardhnagar, they were like uh, uh, muds were there, they were residing over there. Near the Vardhnagar, there is a Taranga hill also, there we have find so many stupas also. So we can say like Buddhism was growing over there during the 6th century and during the 7th century over there. So this is the images of the uh, yeah, findings which we found during the state uh, archaeology when they did the excavation. So this is the photograph of the Bhikshuni mud, which is uh, like Buddhist mud. And uh, these are the different periods we are talking about, continue like cultural period we are finding. So uh, uh, 80, up to the 18 meter deep, we have ASI, they have undertaken the excavation over there and continue cultural periods we are finding over there. So through the different kinds of breaks on the wall, it is easily visible like you can also identify like which period is which we can say. So now we are constructing two museums over there. Number one is the uh, archaeological experiential museum. So this would be the one of its kind museum where we are covering the excavation site over there and visitors they can go to the uh, excavation site up to a certain level and they can have a have an experience over there about the different uh, cultural period and second one is the Tanariri Museum of Music. So this how we are uh, like working and how we are developing the museum. So first we have appointed the primary consultant over there. Then uh, we have a design and technical agency. Then we have a like uh, after design and technical agency, they design the entire building. Then we have taken on board for the curation of the agency. And now we are working on the curation of both of the museums. So the uh, archaeological experiential museum, we have started the work of this archaeological mu uh, museum during the November 2022 and we have target to complete this museum by 2024. The cost of this project would be approximately 212 CR. So completely we received like got the support from the Ministry of uh, Culture and 100% uh, we are getting finance from the Ministry of Culture for this museum project. The second is the permanent shade. We are covering the excavation site uh, completely with a permanent shade. So there also we are trying to give the, we will try to give the experience to the visitor. Uh, so the museum and the excavation site, they both are connected through a bridge. So first visitor, they can uh, visit to the museum. They can see the whatever findings we found during the excavation will be on display in the museum. And then visitor, they can go on the site. Uh, so this is just about the museum, like what kind of technology we are going to use, how like permanent, what would be the there in the permanent shade and what would be the there in the museum building. So this is the like museum building, which is going to be like construction is in process. And uh, next year in month of uh, February 2024, this museum is going to be inaugurated. So total nine galleries we are showcasing over there in this museum. So there we have like two small temples also we have over there. So we are retaining both the museum. One museum is the satellite that is the temple, which is also called the Vahanvati. So both the temples we are keeping over there and we are trying like visitors, they can also come to there and uh, sentiment of villagers are there. So they can regularly come to those temples, they can pay like their homage. So we will maintain all the traditions which are there in the Vardhnagar. 
So this this is the present images. Construction is going on over there. This is the images of the excavation site. There you can see like almost 18 meter deep ASI they have gone to showcase the different cultural period. So location of the site is also very beautiful. So there is a Sarmisa Lake also, and almost this is 100 meters long fort wall is there, which they have found during the excavation. So we are highlighting this fort wall also over there. So this fort wall will be like one of the USP for this museum. Second one is the Tana Riri Museum of Music. Music. So this building is almost ready. So. We have already tendered, tendered out for the interior part, like execution of this museum and the out exterior part tender is in process. Building is almost ready. So name of the Tana Riri Museum is given, actually two sisters were there. So I just uh, tell you the story. He, during the 16th century in the Akbar court, Tansen was there. So Akbar ne ek bar Tansen ko bola ki unhe raag deepak sunna hai. So, Tansen ke bahut mana karne ke baad bhi Akbar nahi mana aur usne bola ki nahi aaj aapko Raag Deepak gaana hi padega. So, jab Akbar ne Raag Deepak gaaya, to kehte hain ki itna garmi maha pe ho gai ki garmi ki wajah se deep jalne lagi aur kaafi is tarhe ki kahaniya batai ja rahi hai. Lekin, jo Raag Deepak Tansen ne gaaya, uska usse Tansen ka pura sharir jalne laga, buri tere jalne laga. काफी दिनों तक तानसेन इधर उधर घूमता रहा, भटकता रहा, but उसके शरीर को जो है शीतलता नहीं मिली। तो ऐसा कहा जाता है कि तानसेन घूमते घूमते वडनगर अपने पहुंचता है। तो वडनगर में नरसी मेहता की जो दोहिती होती हैं, नरसी मेहता की डॉटर की डॉटर, उनकी दोहिती जो होती हैं, वो क्लासिकल सिंगर होती म्यूजिक गा रही हैं तो तानसेन उनको पूरी बात बताता है दोनों बहनों को तो दोनों बहनें तानसेन को कहती हैं कि हम आपके लिए मेघ मल्लार गाएंगे उससे आपके शरीर को शीतलता मिलेगी ये कहने के बाद जब दोनों बहनें मेघ मल्लार गाती हैं तो कहते हैं कि बारिश होती है काफी और उसके बाद में तानसेन के शरीर को बहुत शीतलता मिलती है वो अकबर के कोर्ट में जब तानसेन वापस जाता है वो पूरी कहानी अकबर को सुनाता है तो अकबर कहता है कि दोनों बहनों को मेरे कोर्ट में पेश किया जाए तो जब अकबर के दरबार से दोनों बहनों को लेने जा, जाते हैं तो दोनों बहनें मना कर देती हैं कि सिर्फ हम ईश्वर के सामने गाते हैं हम किसी राजा के सामने नहीं गाते हैं बट जब देखते हैं कि अकबर अपने सेनापति को भेजता है कि वडनगर को पूरा आप उजाड़ दें और दोनों बहनों को किसी तरह हमारे कोर्ट में लेकर आए तो जब दोनों बहनों को मालूम पड़ता है कि अकबर का सेनापति आया है और इधर से पूरा वडनगर को तो दोनों बहनें जल समाधि ले लेती हैं तो बहनों की मेमोरी में ये म्यूजियम का नाम हमने ताना रीडी मेमोरी ये म्यूजियम ऑफ म्यूजिक रखा है एंड इसके अलावा जो है एक अवार्ड भी वडनगर में भी दिया जाता है ताना रीडी के नाम से इन द फील्ड ऑफ म्यूजिक सो दिस म्यूजियम विल आल्सो बी लाइक बाय नेक्स्ट ईयर दिस म्यूजियम विल आल्सो बी रेडी ओवर देयर इन वडनगर सो फॉर दिस ऑल्सो मिनिस्ट्री ऑफ कल्चर दे आर सपोर्टिंग इन दिस म्यूजियम एक्चुअली वी आर शोकेसिंग the complete history of the museum for from Nisarg Sangeet to the modern Sangeet. So all the phases of the music we are going to showcase over there, Nisar, Nisar Sangeet will be there, uh, Lok Sangeet will also be there, so different musics will be there and we are also trying like, this will be completely uh, visitors, they can create their own music, we are trying to give such kind of experience over there. So this is the like Nisar Sangeet, I am not going in detail because we have like very less time. Then Adim Sangeet, uh, this is the Lok Sangeet, so there are like different traditions and we have different uh, folk songs also related to the agriculture and different traditions. Uh, this is the again different religion, uh, music related to the bhajan and religion. Then the history and evaluation of music. Then this is the section we are creating where visitor they can have experience of the Raag Deepak and Raag Malla. So in this section we are creating the like uh, water curtain. So when like Tansen he is singing the Raag Deepak so visitor they can feel the heat. So when Tanai Riri they will start the singing Meg Malla they can also feel the that coldness and Shitalta they can also feel over there. Mr. So such kind of experience we are trying to give.
right, yes, Mr. Sir. Sharma. This is wonderful. Thank you so much for this. I'm afraid we are out of time. But um, this is a wonderful introduction to the vision that you are building this museum and the set of museums. Just only one thing. We have also signed like MOUs with the different universities to work to undertake the research on the Vardnagar. So work is continue going on and we are getting uh, complete support from Ministry of Culture. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Uh, we've kind of over, overshot our time, so I don't think we'll have time for Q&A with the audience. But I'm going to wrap up this discussion with a quick uh, set of questions to our uh, panelists. Um, very quickly, uh, questions that also reflect some of the challenges that you have faced. Uh, because the, the thing with India is that we don't lack, our, lack history or uh, uh, the ability to have multiple museums. I think the statistic given was we have 1,200 museums uh, and more counting. But the challenge is really how do you make museums a vibrant place of interaction, a place which reflects the true potential of a museum. So I'm going to quickly, and I think all four of these gentlemen are doing fabulous work around this space, but I'm going to quickly ask you, Frederick, your focus is in creating a people's museum. How important is the buying from the people? How are you you know, evangelizing the idea of this museum with the local people, because I think that buy-in is very important to make it significant. Yeah, um, so uh, in, fact, in response to your question, Mini, um, as uh, the keynote speakers in the morning had just mentioned that a museum is not just a warehouse, and we need to engage, we need to, uh, for that experience to be immersive. So we, we need to, and also the previous speakers have just mentioned that we need to have, uh, you know, performances. We need to uh, make it experiential and make the whole, ex make the whole experience uh, 360 degree, touching all the senses, because uh, it would uh, be meaningless if, uh, if a museum, you know, visit would just be to visit something lifeless. I mean, you need to have performances. It needs to be like where you have, uh, you know, exhibits, you have uh, people interacting, you have, uh, uh, you know, the panel discussions, you have performances, you have work, as well as network. So, something like that. that that's very important. Uh, Shuklaji, uh, you know, uh, Madhya Pradesh, uh, capital of India, and movements in one state, actually, from the Paleolithic to uh, the tribal and the indigenous, which is uh, folk culture, which is continuous. How do you make sense of all of this? It's not an easy task to kind of have a kind of a policy that encompasses all of this. In your mind, how are you segregating? How, what is your vision to bring it, to maintain the sanctity and the individuality while also bringing it all together? Well, that, that's definitely a huge challenge uh, for the state government, uh, really to figure out how to really uh, you know, bring, bring in the resources, right kind of resources, right kind of people, persons who curate uh, these kind of uh, experiences, and also uh, the right kind of technology to showcase all the aspects of tangible and intangible rich uh, diversity which we have in Madhya Pradesh. And so we are uh, very much focused on our approaches, so we cannot deal with everything uh, simultaneously. So we are focusing more on intangible first, which is easier for us to do. Now comes the second part where uh, there is a huge scope of application of technology and we need huge resources, financial resources, and also right kind of creative people to curate those kind of tangible uh, 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 kind of museums. So definitely we have prioritized, uh, you know, how we are going to go about it and whatever comes easy for us attempt that and then and as and when the resources come by we keep on creating more and more new experiences in our museums Ex it's an ongoing experiment and an exercise Absolutely. one has to have a lot of patience this is a real creative work and we cannot do things overnight a lot of time is required a lot of patience required and above all you have to hit upon the right person to really curate that kind of an experience right. Anjali ji, I'm going to ask you, um, I was going to let you have the last word, but I think uh, it, it, we'll go in sequence. I'm going to ask you, what has the biggest learning been from the success of Bihar Museum, from the idea to the manifestation of the idea to what it is today? 
what is the learning? What is the one thing that you, you've taken away which you think other museums can pick up? The first question that one should ask when you are making a museum is who are your visitors? What is happening in most of our planning, you have different templates. Like you have archaeological site museums, history museums, contemporary art museums. The first question is that what community wants? And in case of Bihar Museum, we had a very detailed discussion with our stakeholders. Like when we were designing our children's section, so they discussed with different group of students, school going, out of school children, parents, what those children want. Because, you know, again, then you have to see what is available already. Like we already had a small science museum. So many things which we are already there, we did not do. But what new things they wanted to learn or do or experience, the first question is you ask your visitors. So if you are, if you are, if you have a good connect with the community, artist, art fraternity, art critic, historian, if you have that type of connect, you have to keep on having a dialogue and learning. You have to learn. Then only because, you know, the otherwise, if you want to, you see a very good museum, you just copy. That cannot succeed because you have a completely different ecosystem. So what is going to suit in your ecosystem? One thing was very clear in our mind that we will make the best in India. So that was from right from the beginning. So we took the best for concept consultant, for architect, for our fabricators. So whoever was available materials, because when we were doing all that, those global competitions, those things were not here. People were not knowing how to do a global competition, transparent competition where people big names will participate. Then you had to ask for vendors. The problem was from where to get the showcases. Because the type of showcases we were using in museum, but we went for the best, we went to Glass One, they are the best in museum showcases. So that was in very clear in our mind, that we have to make a museum, you know, a museum infrastructure of international standard, where, you know, you can get exhibitions from different countries. If, you know, a big exhibition wants to come from, uh, say, France or Germany or a developed country, where they are going to exhibit? Where are those halls that Tate Modern has? So that was in our mind that we have to create an infrastructure where we can get the best of the world. Thank you. Vision, an ambition to create the best in the world, and, and most importantly, I think, getting stakeholders to understand what they would like. Because very often, you know, museums are not just about foreign tourists coming into museums. It's also about interacting with the local populace. And, um, you know, uh, uh, Mr. Sharma tell you that when you were talking about the Sakotari Ma uh, temple, a uh, few people realize that uh, Sakotari Ma is actually, we've done a story on her and we've done many uh, films on her. And she's actually a fascinating character from history because she is a goddess named after an island of Socotra on the, off the coast of Yemen. And across Harappan sites, there are references to Sakotari Ma because she was uh, the goddess of, uh, of uh, merchants and travelers who went by the sea. You know, the Harappan civilization was largely a seafaring, uh, trade-oriented civilization. And from there on, we have a continuous reference to Sakotari Ma, and I've actually done satellite imagery to see where all the Sakotari Ma temples are. She's now called Vahanvati. But it's across the coastal belt, across Lothal, across um, all the uh, important seaports through history. That itself is a story. So in India, you have a story, and you have multiple other stories that kind of augment that story. How do you capture it all? And how are you capturing it all at, at the new museum? Because you have the advantage of setting up a new museum from scratch. Uh, actually, in that, uh, about to capturing these stories, we have like team of experts who are experts in different fields. And ASI, as already I have mentioned, like they have undertaken the, all the excavation and they have found the Sikotra temple, existence of Sikotra temple in Vadnagar. Right now, they are also doing research on different aspects of that Sikotar Mata temple to be in Vadnagar, ki how 
this uh, temple is there. They are trying to connect it with the Sakota Island also. And uh, so, as I have already mentioned, like we have signed MOUs with the different universities. IIT Khadakpur is there, IIT Gandhinagar is there, and uh, Banaras Hindu University is there, SAP University is there. So, so many universities are involved. So, they have taken the research projects on different aspects related to the word number. So, it is not the one-man show. We have an entire team who is working on that different aspect. And uh, uh, like in the, from the curation side, we have also Atul Tiwadi ji on board, who is the writer of the three idiot movie. So, everybody knows. So, that is why like they are working on that. They are uh, like some people, they are working on the storyline. Some people, they are very closely working uh, for the curation. They are doing the research work. So, the team is there who is working for this. Right. Yeah. On that note, thank you so much, uh, everybody, for being part of this. It's an exciting time to be in the museum space, uh, and the potential is, is mind-blowing. So <laughs> let's hope all of these plans come to fruition, and all the very best to all of you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Enel, for moderating this session. And thank you so much to each and one of our speakers. It was indeed quite uh, eye-opening for us and to know that such marvelous museums uh, are already there wonderful work and i think india is probably the only uh, country where we get to you know uh, ha have an experience of these museums uh, practically for free or maybe for a very uh, token i was ma'am and she was saying that you literally get broke uh, when you visit museums abroad and you know it's so expensive to just take an experience like that so Really kudos to, uh, you know, uh, people who are behind uh, these museums working relentlessly um, to, you know, keep it to that level so that uh, we as an audience and then the public can enjoy these spaces. Uh, before we, um, uh, you know, uh, finally conclude the session, we'd like to present our mementos to our uh, session moderator and to all our speakers as a small token of our appreciation. Thank you so much. Can we have a big round of applause for them once again, ladies and gentlemen. I think our uh, master class on metaverse and museums is already taking place. So if you're interested, please do join. Uh, it's on stage two.